Hi, my name is Katrina. I'm also known as Hulls Marland. Last week I did my first diary of how I was getting on in my progress to being more fit, which started on the 1st of September. So I figured I'd log back on this week and let you know how I was getting on. So last week I did my first park run. A park run, you'll find loads of information on, I think it's parkrun.ie. So basically it's five kilometers of a timed run in a local public park. So my closest park run is in Ardgillen, which is in North County Dublin, which is in Ireland. So it's a timed five kilometer run. Now, if you know where Ardgillen is, it, it falls from quite a high hill down into the sea. Um, and there are some very, very tough hills there to run. So it's not just as simple as going out and running a timed five kilometer park run on the flat that I could do every day. It's a, it's a run that really challenges even the most experienced of runners. So you'd often see people who come from running clubs coming along to do the free park run every week. Last week, between last week and this week, I worked really hard on building up my stamina, beginning to run for longer periods of time and being beginning to run at a slower pace for longer periods of time. So I wasn't like dashing along. I was more learning to be able to maintain a running speed for a longer distance. I hope the heck that makes sense. So I had a bit of a blip on Thursday. I did my regular five kilometer walk in the middle of the day and I knew that I would have to do about a two kilometer run that afternoon. Um, and it was about eight o'clock by the time I managed to get the kids to bed and be able to find time to get out and do that run. Um, but what I wasn't thinking about was my footwear, which was really, really daft. And I was actually wearing an older pair of runners that the shocks are gone in. And I ended up getting a kilometer into the run and then I realized the shocks were gone and my knees and my legs were really, really beginning to give out. I was completely hydrated. I had, so I had drunk loads of water. Um, I had done my stretches and the whole lot. I was completely warmed up, but the one thing I had completely ne neglected to take a look at was my shoes. So I hobbled back up the hill home on Thursday evening. Um, and all day Friday, I was kind of a bit unsure as to whether I'd be able to manage to do park run on Saturday. But I did, and I did park run yesterday. The results came in yesterday afternoon. I shaved seven minutes, 45 seconds off my time from last week, which is brilliant in itself. But do bear in mind, I was pushing the boogie last week and this week I didn't have the kids with me. So that made a little bit of a difference. Um, I also beat my husband. <laughs> um, he says he hurt his ankle, but he doesn't seem to be limping all that much today. I'm taking that win. I'm absolutely over the moon. I can't believe that, you know, he would play football every week. Now, he would be pretty much on the same fitness level as I would be, but normally if I'd be running against or racing against a bloke, I'm pretty sure he'd probably beat me hands down. This time, though, I beat him by a good couple of minutes, so I'm thrilled with that. Um, what else has been going on this week? This week has all been about being honest. Um, with myself. Uh, I think that one of the things when you decide that you want to be fit or fitter and lose weight is that, is that you have to be completely and totally honest with yourself. For me, I've been cutting myself a little bit. Not, not just cutting myself, but not being totally honest with myself. And I use an app on my phone, and I'm sure an awful lot of people may have heard of it. It's called My Fitness Pal. So it's available online, and it's available as an app in the Google Play Store on Android, and obviously it's available on iOS as well. And it's free, which is even better, because I hate paying for things like that. Um, it's a brilliant database of common foods. You can input your own food information, but it also has a really, really handy barcode scanner. So if I buy any products in the supermarket, I can scan it and it, in it instantly delves into its database, pulls out the nutritional information about the food that I'm going to eat. So I can see how many calories, what level of fiber, what level of carbohydrate, and all kind of the stuff that I really need to be monitoring. Because at the end of the day, if I'm sticking to my RDA, that's my recommended daily allowance of calories per adult of my age and my height, then I really, really want to be careful that I'm 
maximize that RDA. So I wanna make sure that I get the most amount of nutrition out of it. Because if I go off and I eat, say a chopped up bar for 230 calories, well, it's unlikely that I'm going to get a decent nutritional content from that chocolate bar. I'll get plenty of calories, I might get an instant kind of hit of energy, but I'm not gonna get, you know, vitamins, minerals, fiber, and all the other stuff that, you know, you depend on in your daily intake. But coming back to this whole honesty thing, if you're gonna use an app like that, or there's, there's hundreds of them out there, or if you're going to start logging the food that you're eating every day, or if you're going to, start in a in a weight loss program maybe for example you might like slimming world or weight watchers i don't go to them but if if you are going to start doing them it depends on you being honest and it depends on you being honest with yourself so the two tools that i use to be completely honest with myself are a trusty old reliable weighing scales so i can check and see what grams and what amounts that i'm eating every day and then the other thing is obviously the MyFitnessPal app. But this honesty is just so important. I prepare meals every day and also I'd be working on dishes and meals for the blog and perhaps for clients as well. And one of the things that obviously I have to do is I have to taste as I go along. Now I could taste all of this food and not mark it down, but all this food that I'm tasting, it has a calorific content. So I have to be 100% honest with myself. I could taste as many as eight or maybe 10 spoons of food going through the day. And if I don't log that down, that's extra calories that I've not added into my recommended daily allowance. So it's really important that I'm completely and utterly honest with myself. It's also important if I decide that I want to pick off the kids' plates. Come on, there has to be parents out there who do that. <laughs> if I decide that I want to pick off the kids' plates, that's okay, but I have to log it down so that I understand exactly what I'm consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, that's kind of, if you watch this video and you think, gosh, you know, is there something that maybe I'm doing wrong? then I really, really, really urge you to be 100% honest with yourself. And if you're using an app like MyFitnessPal, make sure to weigh the food that you're consuming before you put the data into MyFitnessPal. It's not good enough just to say, you know, oh, I had a banana, and then to select from MyFitnessPal that you had a banana, and I think one of the top entries comes in at 81 calories, but that's a small organic banana. If you have a larger banana, well, it could be as much as 150 calories. So there's difference of 70 calories between the two size bananas. So it's like, you can see why it's really important to weigh what you're eating. I suppose, and I'm hoping that, I mean, I'm seven weeks, eight weeks nearly into this journey now, but. I, I hope that in the future I will become more educated in what I do. Um, at the moment, I have to admit, I can visually gauge sort of what, like for example, maybe a bowl of flour, I can visually gauge, you know, how many grams are in it, but I can't depend on that. And if I want to be 100% honest with myself and 100% committed to becoming more fit and hopefully losing weight, well then I have to absolutely watch my intake and watch what I'm doing. Um, so I think, you know, it's it's really weird. Um, when I when I finished the park run yesterday, I had, like I finished at a, well, about quarter past-ish, quarter past 10 yesterday morning. And I had such a feeling of being thrilled, like I had such an elated feeling. And still today, it's the middle of afternoon on Sunday and I still have this absolutely wonderful uh, feeling of elation. I've run this, well run, and I, admittedly I did walk some of it, but I ran, I did the park run yesterday morning and it's been over 24 hours since I completed it. And I still have this feeling of being, you know, happy of being elated with the results that I achieved. And what's interesting is that I used to associate having a full stomach or eating something nice with feeling elated, with feeling happy. But that feeling of being happy doesn't last. Like once you eat that food an hour or two hours later, that feeling of being happy is gone. And I suppose that's why I would have often, two hours after eating, I would have often gone off and tried to find something else to eat to make myself feel happy. 
and I've begun to realise that it's not the food that makes me feel happy, it's an emotional kind of attachment to the food and I'm beginning to become more emotionally attached to exercising and having a measurable result at the end of exercising. So there, that's kind of been my journey for this week. I hate using that phrase, sorry. Um, that's where I've come from in the past week. I've begun to realise that if I train during the week, so if I train for five days, obviously I have a rest day, if I train for five days and I do then a park run or a timed five kilometer run, then I'll have a, a goal to work towards and then I'll have a project to work on with a quantifiable result at the end. And that's something that I really think that I can work on and work with. So, um, there's more sugar-free recipes coming up on the blog over the next week. I shared a recipe for sugar-free brownies. There are peanut butter and chocolate brownie with a hidden ingredient. There are extra brownie points for vegetables in this sugar-free recipe. I hope you enjoy it. It's over on the blog on wholesomeireland.com. Um, I might have a book review or two coming up over the next week or so. And here's to another week of staying fit, of improving on my fitness, of being 100% honest with myself on the food that I eat and hopefully getting an awful lot more restful sleep. Whatever you're up to for the week ahead, have a good one. Bye!